In this video, we're going to continue our derivation of maximum likelihood estimators of factor analysis models. So the idea is that we had this log likelihood here, which we derived in the end of the last video. And that was assuming that we had a factor analysis model, which was written in this sort of form up here. And we assumed that the indicator variables were multi-normal distributed with a variance, which is given by the matrix sigma. OK, so how can we work at this a little bit further? Well, the way in which we're going to go about this, first of all, is to look at this term here. So if I just rewrite this, this is the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi all transposed times the inverse of sigma times yi. And the first thing we're going to do here is a bit of a trick. Because this expression here is actually scalar, then it turns out that the trace of a scalar is just the original scalar. So we can just replace this by the sum from i equals 1 to n of the trace of yi all transposed times the inverse of sigma times yi. And then we use another trick. Essentially what we do is we pre-multiply by n and then we have to divide this expression in the brackets by n. So then we just get n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the trace of n to the power minus 1 times yi all transposed times the inverse of sigma times yi. And it's a property of the trace operator that the trace of matrices A, B, and let's say C is the same thing as the trace of C, A, B. So in other words, it's the same, or it's invariant under cyclic permutation of its arguments. So what we can do is we can use this to help us rewrite this expression in terms of inside the parenthesis here which is just n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the trace of, first of all, we're just going to keep the n where it is, just because it's a scalar, times yi on its own, times yi primed, times sigma to the power minus 1, where essentially all we've done is we've taken this yi here and we've put it out the front here. And it turns out that you can actually take the trace to the outside of the summation, because it doesn't matter whether you take the trace of the sum or sum the traces of the individual elements. So this is the same thing as n times the trace of the sum from i equals 1 to n of n to the power minus 1 yi times yi transposed times the inverse of sigma. And because the sigma actually has no index of summation, we can rewrite this as n times the trace of first of all the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi times yi transpose all divided through by n and it's this expression first of all times sigma to the power minus 1 and then all I need to do is close this off with another square bracket. Then what we do is we realize that this term inside the summation here is really just the variance or the sample covariance which is observed for an individual i which when we take the sum of that, because we're normalizing by a factor of n, just represents the sample variance covariance matrix. So what we can then do is we can rewrite this as n times the trace of the sample variance covariance matrix times sigma to the power minus one. And it's important to stress that S here actually is, it's a consistent estimator of the overall variance covariance matrix sigma but it is in fact a biased estimate of the variance covariance matrix. And it comes back to Bessel's correction. Essentially what we need to do is we would need to divide it through by n minus one rather than n. Okay, so now that we've derived this expression, we can then go ahead and be able to write down our log likelihood in a much sort of neater form. 